It's not just big animals that get caught up in scraps and brawls. The insect kingdom can also be pretty gnarly. Seriously so, in fact. Want to know how serious? Keep those eyes peeled. These are the 20 craziest insect fights caught on camera. Number 20. Mantis vs. Scolopendra Praying mantises are total creeps, so watching one of these insects stalking an unsuspecting centipede is pretty sinister to say the least. These creepy insects look as though they've been designed for a science fiction film. Their alien-eyed heads and intensely sinister bodies with all their terrifying gestures make the mantis perfect nightmare inspiration. Add to that the female mantis's famous proclivity towards postcoital cannibalism, and it's no wonder that these incredible insects have a bit of a reputation. Yes, that's right. In case you didn't know, the female will mate with a male mantis, and then once the deed is done, she'll bite off his head and eat him. And it turns out that this seemingly psychotic behavior may actually make it more likely that the mantis will reproduce the female one, obviously, because, well, the dude is dead. So it should come as no surprise that this centipede, which is sometimes known as a scolopendra, finds itself in a spot of bother when that mantis decides that it wants to see what the centipede's head tastes like. The battle is swift and the result is inevitable. The mantis is a formidable opponent and the centipede is a goner. Incredible, albeit terrifying stuff. The insect world is truly horrible horrifying at times, and we've only just gotten started. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. I bet you never thought that you'd see a fight between a scorpion and a tarantula, and yet here we are. Both of these creepy crawlies are kind of terrifying. Both are known for causing trouble, so it makes sense that when they meet, trouble and violence ensue. I sure don't want to get caught up in a tussle like this. Just look at these guys going at each other. As always, comment down below using the hashtag sweet topic and let me know your opinion in relation to what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19. Giant Centipede versus Venomous Tarantula. There's just something kind of perverse about putting two types of insects into an enclosure and waiting to see if they'll have a fight. And like the mantis and centipede, maybe one of them will finish off the other. There's something of the gladiatorial spectacle, or worse, the cockfight, about these battles. But hey, who are we to judge if you're that sort of pervert? Here we are then with a giant centipede and a venomous tarantula having been trapped together in a glass case. Will they even notice? Do they even care? Well, kind of, but also not really. What happens is actually underwhelming, even if the whole concept itself is morally dubious. The centipede begins the encounter as if it's on a mission to irritate its cellmate, getting all up in the tarantula's face, failing to respect personal space, and generally pursuing the spider round and round the enclosure. So far, so annoying. To its credit though, that tarantula demonstrates enormous patience until eventually the irksome centipede pushes the boundaries a bit too far and the spider lashes out. The tarantula then takes refuge from its enforced cage companion by clambering up the side and staying well away from the pest. So much for the battle then. Number 18. Leafcutter Ant Soldier vs. Speckled House Spider Leafcutter ants are kind of brutish. They'll easily take down smaller insects in territorial battles, but what happens if they take on a spider? We all know how spiders hunt. Their patient and considered approach is the opposite of the leafcutter ant soldier's reactionary attacks. 
All the speckled house spider needs to do is stretch her sticky, messy web across a few strategic points and then lie in wait for a dopey old ant to wander along and get ensnared in the strands. So when the larger and distinctly more dangerously jawed leaf cutter ant gets tangled in the silky threads, it is still a risky business for the smaller and much more delicate spider. After all, one wrong move and that ant could cut her in half. So the spider waits with the patience of, well, a spider. She allows the ant to get himself in a pickle, all on his own making, and then she picks her moment, descending the web and throwing threads at the ant. It's still a dangerous situation. The leaf cutter ant's jaws must be avoided or it's game over for that spider. When the opportunity arises, the spider takes her chance and delivers a venomous bite. This is the beginning of the end for the ant as it slowly dies and the spider waits for dinner. I'm beginning to suspect the insect world has more fights in it than a Marvel movie. Number 17. Wasp vs. Bumblebee if there was the definition of overkill, it might as well be this particular encounter between a bumblebee and a wasp. Frankly, the bumblebee looks like it's already on its last legs, just laying there on the sidewalk, suffering. And then, to add insult to injury, along comes a nasty old wasp to sting the bejesus out of it. The person who filmed this unfortunate encounter has apparently counted the wasp's stings, and that vicious little insect gave it to the poor stricken bee no less than 174 times. Ouch! Just one wasp sting is horrifically painful, so I can't even begin to imagine how awful 174 must have been. Please remind us to never, ever upset a wasp. But it does turn out that wasps are kind of psychos. There are some species of wasp that actually hunt and kill bees. Doesn't that seem kind of crazy to you? I thought that bees and wasps would be friends. Is that dumb? Let me know in the comments below if that's dumb. But all of us here at the channel thought that wasps and bees would be best buds. However, they will lie in wait near a hive and pick off the bees one by one. Others are opportunists and are partial to a solitary bee like the bumblebee. Isn't that kind of sadistic? What the heck, wasps? These wasps are capable of basically sawing their prey in half sometimes so as to munch on the tastier parts, other times so that they can come back for the rest later on. These adept killers are also not against chewing up the unfortunate bee to remove the awkward appendages and turning the remainder into an infinitely more transportable food ball. Their table manners may require some work. Number 16. Spider vs. Butterfly Spiders have a double whammy of techniques to take down any insect, but when it comes to the more feckless, frilly sorts like butterflies, that increases to triple skills. Oh, those poor, poor butterflies. These spiders not only have a sticky web to snare the flappers, they also have their venomous bite, and they use the butterfly's own nature against them, taking full advantage of the butterfly habitats. In a so-called fight between a butterfly and a spider, it is really no contest at all. The clever spider builds a gossamer fine web right between the leaves of a brightly colored flower from which the butterflies just love to gather nectar. Along comes the pretty but air-headed butterfly flapping and feeling all fancy, flying face first into that trap. And the trouble with spiders' fine silken threads is that those things are just so gosh darn sticky. Once you're in it, the more you try to escape, and the more that sticky stuff gets twirled around you. Then, unfortunately, it's most likely curtains for that butterfly. The spider just has to make one well-timed attack, injecting the prey with venom, and then step back until it's all over. Ruthless, utterly, utterly ruthless. Number 15. Murder Hornets vs. Bees with a name like murder hornets, you know these things are trouble. In fact, they're more than just trouble. 
These Asian giant hornets are a genuine threat to bee populations everywhere. They'll actually seek out a target hive of honeybees to slaughter. They do this by sending out workers, which will spot the colonies, and then they mark it with a pheromone. This is to help them find their way back when they've gathered a gang of murderous buddies. So then the hornets return in greater numbers, sometimes with up to as many as 50, and then they just go to town on that colony. These violent thugs can wipe out entire bee populations of thousands in just a few hours. Number 14. Devil Scorpion vs. Warrior Beetle Here we go again with people popping various insects into a battle arena to watch them fight to the death. Are we okay with this? Is there a difference between this and any other kind of animal fighting? If humans set it up and make the confrontation inevitable for our own amusement, then surely we have to at least question the morality of this behavior, don't we? What do you think? Is it right to put any creatures from tiny insects to apex predators into a situation specifically to watch them fight it out? Most likely to the death. Let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below because I really want to know what you think. This time around, we have a human with a bloodlust dumping a warrior beetle into a tank along with a devil scorpion. He knew what would happen as well, since he warned viewers in no uncertain terms that the beetle would feed on its natural prey. And yes, it may be its natural prey, but it's certainly not a fair fight. Number 13. Bull Ant Fighting a Cricket so it happens that if you have pet spiders, you need to feed them. I know, it sounds so crazy, but there you go. Anyways, one of the things that you can apparently purchase from the pet food shop are live crickets. Mmm, delicious. These are classified as live food. I wonder if they're aware that their living status is simply to feed other animals. And as such, once purchased, there's no reason that people can't simply pop out and grab themselves any old insects from outside and stick them together in a tank with said live food product. This bull ant and this cricket are stuck together and a limited battle commences. The bull ant is a vicious little so-and-so and it doesn't take long for the situation to become untenable for the cricket and he basically gives up the ghost and lays down for a good die. Then the ant is done with him. The end. Number 12. Leech versus Scorpion. The Asian black scorpion is put up against this blood sucking leech. I mean, it seems as though this is only going to go one way, right? Surely a scorpion is a bigger danger to most creatures than a leech, but let's have a look anyways. Apparently the scorpion is not an especially deadly one in general. Their bite is not powerful enough to lead to the death of human beings, but a leech is not a human, even if you happen to know some humans that could be best described as leeches. When the leech is placed inside the scorpion's enclosure, the leech heads heads toward the other insect, but the scorpion doesn't sting. Well, not for a while anyway. The leech just keeps on harassing the scorpion until eventually, after the claws don't work, the scorpion does finally administer a sting. But then although we're waiting to see the effect of the venom, nothing happens. The leech is seemingly unbothered by the poison and just carries on trying to climb on the scorpion and that's really about it. A super annoying leech and an irritated scorpion mooch around a tank like a pair of disgruntled and argumentative housemates in a constant bickering match. Number 11. Blowfly ejects maggots while being eaten by mantis. Now we've already seen the kind of carnage that a creepy old mantis can deliver, but what happens when it's placed inside of a tank with a big fat fly? Well, exactly what you would expect, actually. So it takes very little time at all for the mantis to start stalking the prey, and then in a flash, it has a firm grip on the fly and is already beginning to eat it within a matter of seconds. The fly, obviously, is still alive, as this is how the slightly insane and distinctly scary mantis prefers its dinners, wriggling and helpless. These insects are psychopaths, after all. Anyways, as the slow-eating alive process continues, the tortured insects 
insect keeps on trying to free itself, but whatever it attempts becomes a failure, as the mantis has such a solid grip on the blowfly that it is definitely the end. So ultimately, the blowfly does the one final thing that it can do at this point. It ejects maggots as it's eaten to death. This may be amongst the most disgusting of things I've seen all day. No, Twinkle, don't look. It's too nasty for your beautiful, innocent little guinea pig eyes. Number 10. Tree Scorpion vs. Green Ants Apparently, green ants are extremely aggressive and will stop at nothing to protect their queen and colony. So when a tree scorpion blunders into their territory, it's a serious infraction and there will be consequences. The pale green ant looks unassuming, but these tiny insects are harboring a violent streak and they'll take no nonsense, thank you very much. They have a pair of fierce jaws that they use for biting the bejesus out of their enemies and that's exactly what happens in this epic battle. Although the green ant has no stinger, it does have another weird technique to dispense with naughty intruders. They spray a chemical from out of their abdomens. With all these nasty weapons, it should come as no surprise that the tree scorpion was not long for this world and was rapidly dispensed with by the sharp-jawed substance spraying insect. Boom and job done. Number 9. Bull Ant vs. Redback Spider At this point, we're all aware that the bull ant is kind of mean and will stop at nothing to do a spot of violence, so how might one do in a fight with a redback spider? As one of the largest species of ant, this guy has size in his favor, but a spider has a whole host of dangerous stuff at its disposal. When the bull ant accidentally finds itself in the redback spider's territory, it looks like it's curtains for the insect. The ant immediately gets caught on the tripwire of a web that the spider has set at the entrance to its lair, and as the ant struggles, the spider pounces, attempting to begin the process of wrapping the ant, but just to add a little dramatic flair, the ant squirms out of the snare. There's the briefest moment of hope, but then the spider's back on top of the situation, and it's all over for the ant. Number 8. Wasp Zombifies Cockroach Now, here's a story that's going to give you nightmares, and they'll be much, much more elaborate than that stupid centipede walking on your face. No, this is genuinely horrifying stuff, and it's all completely true. The small and solitary jewel wasp is a fairly unassuming character, until you look a bit closer at her feeding habits, that is. These little insects like nothing more than to gorge on the zombified brains of cockroaches. Ooh, tasty. These wasps don't just eat the cockroach, though. They inject them with the very specific venom, which seems to remove the cockroach's ability or will to escape their captor. The venom basically acts like a drug on the cockroach brain, meaning that these poor hapless bugs are going to be slow slowly eaten alive by the wasp and fed to her offspring bit by bit, all while being essentially an unwitting and drug-addled zombie. It's a cruel old world, and sometimes even the tiniest of creatures are the ones dispensing the worst kinds of violence. It's always the quiet ones, you know. Number 7. These hair worms eat a cricket alive and control its mind. Oftentimes found in puddles in California, when it rains that is, the hair worm is a weird long brown spaghetti looking worm that swims in a wild figure of eight motion. But that's not the main feature of these insects. No, that would be a decidedly more sinister thing indeed. These worms go by several names, the hair worm, the horsehair worm, and the Gordian worm. But whatever you happen to call it, these creatures are all about one thing, eating crickets alive. Oh, and they aren't adverse to a spot of mind control in the process either. In fact, this mind control business is how the hair worm gets around. These gross creatures essentially hitch a ride inside the cricket, and as they grow, they eventually take over the host's brain and get the cricket to take it to water, and then they wriggle themselves out of the cricket or whatever other hosts they've been growing inside of, and that's that. They're in the puddle, and the cricket has fulfilled its usefulness. Ugh. Number 6. Dinosaur Ants vs. Trapjaw Ants 
The trapjaw ant is a small black ant that gets its name from its pair of spring-loaded jaws that are efficient for biting enemies and doing some serious damage in a fight. These ants also sport a stinger that help things along a little. Dinosaur ants are a very large species of black ant, and they have a huge jaw to grab their prey and a stinger for injecting venom. So these two are kind of evenly matched, and when they head into battle, it could go either way. In fact, that's sort of what happens here. When they meet, a colony of trapjaw ants get the better of the colony of dinosaur ants, but then in a rematch, the result is reversed, and the dinosaur ants manage to overpower their enemies. Number five, tarantulas take hooking up to the next level. Every September, there is a creepy migration of tarantulas in southeastern Colorado. It's a sight to behold, and the result of which is generally the mating of these spiders, or at least that's the plan when they all set out. The newly mature, horny male spiders all take the road in search of a mate, and when they arrive where they're headed, the males will, if they get lucky, find themselves a lady spider for one of those special cuddles that they're all after. But for the males, this this is their only goal in life. Even if they don't know it yet, these guys are not returning home after the smooching is done. The males will only live a month or so after they take the trip. They're often the prey of other insects. Wasps seem to find them completely irresistible. And then they'll finish them off in a particularly horrific manner. The wasps sting the tarantula and paralyze them with an unpleasant sting. Then they lug them back to their lair and lay an egg inside of the spider. When the larvae hatch from the egg, they gorge on the insides of the arachnid before emerging from their body as an adult wasp. Eesh. Number four, wolf spider versus black widow. The wolf spider is a fast, aggressive hunter. The black widow is known for having an extremely nasty, venomous bite, which although it's rarely deadly, can cause extreme pain, nausea, vomiting, and cramps. So given the fear that a black widow can instill in people, how might a relatively less bitey spider like a wolf spider size up against it? Oh! Generally, the wolf spider bite is not fatal to humans, unless the victim is allergic to spider bites, that is. But the black widow bite does have a 5% kill rate in humans. The wolf spider is the bigger arachnid, but the black widow is super aggressive, and frankly, she's taking no nonsense from anything least of all a big cocky spider in her territory. The Black Widow just keeps coming at the wolf spider, barely giving the bigger spider an opportunity to retaliate at all. The wolf spider is in a bit of a pickle, and it seems that there's not much it can do against the efforts of the Black Widow. Ultimately, the bigger spider is done for, and the Black Widow simply mooches off victorious. Number three, Black Widow versus Huntsman Spider. Again, the much bigger Huntsman Spider proves no match for the smaller but more aggressive Black Widow. Though it attempts to put up a decent fight, the Huntsman's fatal error was engaging such a vicious and deadly spider in the first place. All kinds of upset and trying to wrap it up. Trying to wrap it up. Oh, what we got? Oh, okay. So when the Black Widow seems to repeatedly sting the Huntsman, you know that there's likely no way out. The big spider's visibly struggling to give back any kind of defensive moves, and as the scene unfolds, it becomes less of a fight and more of a one-sided murder situation. Then it's all just a matter of time as the Black Widow spins and begins wrapping the massive spider. It still tries to wriggle for a while, but it's struggling to give back any kind of fighty moves and it's basically game over. A pathetic sight, but the brutal efficiency of the Black Widow is an impressive sight that certainly warrants some admiration, albeit laced with fear and a renewed sense that avoiding these psychotic spiders is the best thing for everyone, from humans all the way through to other species of spiders. A bite from a Black Widow is bad news indeed. Number two, Spider versus Cockroach. Although many people are not exactly big fans of spiders, these creatures have some useful skills when it comes to other pests in the home. In fact, there are some kinds of spiders that will actively hunt down and kill cockroaches. So it's a decision, what do you prefer, spider or cockroach? And who do you suppose might win in this particular epic battle matchup? 
Amongst the spiders that will eat cockroaches are American house spiders, huntsman spiders, wolf spiders, jumping spiders, brown recluse spiders, running spiders, and widow spiders. Many of these species will actively hunt the roaches and kill them. Others build webs and capture them in the classic spidery manner. But since spiders have multiple different sources of food, there's no one variety that they entirely rely on for food supply. More is the pity, or that would be an effective roach control method. Kind of anyway, if you don't mind sharing your home with a whole herd of arachnids, that is. Number 1. Giant Banded Huntsman Spider vs. Jungle Huntsman Spider there are some sizable spiders out there in the forests of the world. This pairing of two different huntsman sorts of spiders shows just how dangerous a battle can get between rival hunters. The way that huntsman spiders hunt and capture their prey is what makes these arachnids deadly predators out in the wild. They're also pretty big, so that helps as well, I should imagine. Yeah, that way, like this. The giant huntsman spider can reach sizes with a leg span of between 10 and 12 inches, and they use a venomous bite to immobilize their prey, and are also capable of inflicting some extremely nasty defensive bites when involved in a fight. These spiders are not web builders, but rather they're active hunters and ambush predators. Their speed and stealth, coupled with their venomous attack, is what makes these spiders such efficient hunters. So when two similar species of huntsman spiders square off against each other, what kind of outcome is likely? The jungle huntsman spider has all the same features as other huntsman spiders, but these guys are extremely fast, the fastest in fact. So to start a fight with one of these spiders is not a great idea for most creatures. These two are both very similar, and just how the situation might be resolved is kind of unclear. In the end, these arch rivals are almost evenly matched, but the giant banded huntsman has a move that can take down the jungle huntsman with a spike through the soft underbelly of the rival spider. And that is that. In the wild, many of these insects may cross paths and exchange cross words, but if we're actively putting them together to watch them in battle, is it even a fair fight? Where do you stand on the insects fighting to the death debate? And do you even care? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Also be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.